Hello and welcome to our third and last section where we're going to make an emoji dictionary app. So the emoji dictionary app basically allows you to see a list of emojis, tap on one of them and see what the definition of it is as well as a big blown up emoji. So first we're going to learn how to work with table views and arrays. This will be really cool to kind of combine the skills that we just learned. Then we're going to learn about segues which basically is how do you move from one view controller to another. Then we're going to learn how to pass info, which specifically means how do we pass this selected emoji on to the next view controller. And then I have a challenge for you to just make sure you've really grasped everything that's going on here. Okay. All right. So here I've got for you the table views with arrays. The big thing that we're learning is how do we list out an array of emojis. Let's go ahead and jump in right now. All right. We've made it. It's finally time to dive into the emoji dictionary. And this is one of my favorite apps just because. One, I love emojis. I think they're one of the funnest thing on phones to text people emojis for different situations. It's cool and whatnot. But also just because, I mean, this is a very simple app, but it sort of teaches awesome fundamentals and ties together a ton of the stuff that we've been working on. So what does this app look like? Basically, we're going to list out a bunch of emojis. Someone taps on one of them, and it's going to show that emoji all blown up big. And then it's going to have some definition of what that emoji is. In this case, a smiley face, right? So that we know more information about that. Okay. So let's just go ahead, dive in, you know, learn this thing. I talk about where it is we want to start first. I probably think we should start with filling out this table view with some emojis. But first things first, let's go ahead and start a new project. So I'm going to create a new Xcode project. We just want a iOS single view application. I'm going to call this the emoji dictionary. Okay. Go ahead and hit next here. Throw that on the old desktop. And, you know, eventually we're going to want to be using the simulator. I like to get it up and running in the background while we're typing here. It seems like once it's open, apps load fairly quickly into the simulator, but it does take a while the very first time that you open it up. So anyways, that's why I got that going. And like I said, so where do we attack first? I think we should get view controller with the table view inside of it set up first, and then we move forward from there. So. What I want to do is I want to go to our storyboard and first make it so that we have a view controller with a table view inside of it. So let's go ahead and do our classic done it a million times. This is only our second time, but this is going to feel classic, this process of creating a table view and whatnot. So we're going to drag this out with this table view. Remember, we want it to fill the entire space. So go to our little TIE fighter friend, make sure we've got zero everywhere. Uncheck the constraint of margins. and. Once we do that, it should take up the entire space. Then what we need to do is we need to connect this to our code so that, you know, we can actually work with it. So we're going to select the table view, do a control drag. I'm going to call that table view. Excellent. That's in there. Okay. Then the next thing that we want to do is once we've got this, I guess this isn't necessary, but I'm going to get rid of that did receive memory warning. But before I do this, something I want to say do things in Xcode look more familiar now? Look at this. You know what these functions are. Like, for example, this one. I mean, so here we have the term override, which it's a little bit more of an advanced concept about what override means. But just know this is a function with the name view did load. It doesn't take in any parameters and it doesn't return anything, right? And all the code that's in between these curly brackets, that's part of this function. Isn't that so cool? Like you understand what that is now. And here where it says super dot view did load, that's calling the view did load function on this thing called super. And again, a little bit more of an advanced concept, so I'm not going to dive into it here, but you can totally understand what's going on now. And so anyways, we'll get rid of this did receive memory warning, but I just want to take that moment to say, hey, you probably understand more of what's going on here now. Pretty cool. All right. So with the table view, remember the setup that we got to do is set a data source and the delegate. So we'll first type out table view dot data source, set that equal to self. Then we'll type out table view dot delegate, and we'll also set that equal to self. Awesome. Okay, once we have that in place, remember we're going to get these errors. So it's saying, oh, we got to conform to the protocol. So we'll say UI table view data source, comma, UI table view delegate. Okay, that moves our error from the bottom here up to the top. Then we have to answer those two infamous questions. So the very first one, if we start typing out table view, 
we want that number of rows in section. You can see these are kind of near the top now since we've used them recently. But So number of rows in section. And look at this. You understand how this function works, right? Like it takes in some parameters like the table view, the number of sections. We're not going to talk about those. But look at this. This table view function returns an int. So now you know when we say something like return 20, you understand why that works because you're saying this function has to give back an int, and so we give back an int here. We return 20. And same thing here when we type out the next question, the self row at index path. Oh, look, this function needs to return a UI table view cell. So we say, let's cell be equal to a new UI table view cell with parentheses, and then go ahead and return that cell. Okay, so I just love that, you know, we took some concepts that we just learned. We're now applying to our current situation. It's like, yeah, you know, this thing here, it kind of makes sense about what's going on. All right, so we've got this working. And again, just, you know, kind of make sure that table view is working. Let's go ahead and set the text and the text label equal to something like, hello. Okay, we'll go ahead and run this on the simulator. Make sure that this all works. Build succeeded, and look at that. We got hello showing up a bunch of times. But with our emoji dictionary, we don't want the same thing showing up. If we go back to our example here, we want to have a list of emojis showing up, right? Like that's what we were aiming for. And here's the question. What's the best way to make a list of something in Swift? It's with arrays. Remember, I said arrays are like lists. So if we want to list something out, we should probably use an array. So first order of business, before we can get some emojis to show up, is we've got to make an array of emojis. So up here at the top, kind of by where we have the table view and stuff, make sure you're not inside of any of these functions, but that you're inside of the class curly brackets, not inside of a function curly bracket. We're going to create a new variable that I'm going to call emojis with an S, because this is going to be an array of emoji objects. And I'm going to set this equal to an array of a bunch of emojis. So if you don't know how to get to the emojis on your Apple computer, you do control command space bar, kind of all at the same time and you should get this menu popping up. So look, here's an awesome looking dude, this guy with, what is that, a monocle? Thank you, little pop-up uh, description there. And ooh, it is not happy for some reason with how we're working with this. But anyways, so with emojis, emojis are actually text, if you didn't know that. So whenever we use an emoji, we have to put the double quotes around them because they're just a string. Let's go ahead and keep adding some more emojis inside of here. Let's do this puking dude. These are some of the newer ones that I'm kind of a fan of. Uh, we got to have the poop emoji in there. That's a classic one. I'm going to start adding some that I think look really cool when they are blown up. So let's see. One of them is the race car. Can't wait to show you that one blow your mind. Speaking of blow your mind, let's do the blow your mind emoji, dude. I'm super glad they added that one. So funny that that's a, a thing you can send people now. I guess, what do they call that? Exploding head. And then the other one was the church emoji. Where is that? There we go. All right, so this is a pretty decent list. What have we got? Six emojis inside of here. So the question is, we've got this array of emojis. How do we get them to show up inside of our table view? Well, remember, we just have to answer two questions, and now let's just answer them with using this array. So, for example, how many rows should be inside of this thing? Well, we could just say, you know, let's count one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, there should be six things, right? And this would be fine. Like, if we go ahead and run this app, you'll see that we only have six rows show up. Right. Okay, we're waiting here. There we go. So this would technically work. But the problem with this is, let's say, for example, we decide to add one more emoji, right? Like we come in here and all of a sudden we add the bowling emoji, right? Well, you know, then we'd have to go into our code and update this to seven. Well, let's say we got rid of like two of these. Well, we'd have to go and update this thing to five. Like it's just kind of cumbersome to, you know, have to constantly update this number for whatever's there when we could just say emojis, which is the name of this array, dot count, which just says, hey, we want there to be as many rows as there are emoji strings inside of that array, right? So if we shrink it down to like two, it's totally fine. This will return two. If we have the full seven here, it will return seven. If we add an eighth one on there, it will return eight. It just works like that. So 
this is kind of the cool way that I said, you know, arrays and table views work really well together. We can simply just say, hey, however many things are in my array, that's how many rows that I want. Now, the next question comes for, you know, what goes inside of each of them? And so something that's very, very important here is that one of the parameters that's passed into this table view function is this thing called index path. So on this index path, if we do index path dot row, it's telling you what row it is that it wants information for. And you can see this comes back as an int object. So for example, when it wants to know about the zero row in the array or in the table view, index path dot row is going to be equal to zero. And when it wants to know the information for the next one down, then index path dot row is going to be equal to one and then two and then three and then four. And so if you're wondering, okay, a table view uses zero base counting. What else uses zero base counting? Arrays. So these two things work really, really well together. So in fact, if we go ahead and talk to our emojis array and we want to get the item at whatever index path dot row is, this will give us the current emoji that the table view is looking for. And in fact, we can put this in a constant here. I'll just call it emoji. Note that I'm doing emoji singular, not with the S. The S is referring to our array up there. So now what we're doing is essentially we're pulling out this emoji, and then we could use this emoji to be, say, hey, the text labels text should be equal to whatever this emoji is. So we can go here, delete this, and say emoji, just like that. And now, Watch this big moment of truth. This is so cool. Here we go. Okay, simulator pops up and look at that. Oh my goodness. The emojis that are in our array are now showing up on a table view. How cool is that? We got the monocle dude. We got the puking, the poop, the race car, exploding head, the church, the bowling. It's all there and it's in the same order. So we know how this works, right? It's saying, hey, how many rows should there be? Well, however many things are here. Now with this function, you might be wondering, well, when is this function ever called, right? Like functions only run when they're called. We had talked about that when we were working in the playground. Well, this is called whenever the table view decides that it needs to know the information. So table views can hold thousands and thousands of rows. So for example, when that happens, when we're scrolling through, Apple is really smart about, okay, as things are sort of coming up here to the bottom of the screen, we need to know, oh, what's like the 14th and the 15th row, stuff like that. It'll call those functions whenever it needs to know that information. And as we scroll down up to like, I don't know, 1,467, you know, it's going to start asking for those. And if we start going in the opposite direction, it will ask for these too. So basically, it's the table view that's calling this function. And the thing that changes each time that it calls it is it changes what the index path dot row is equal to, right? One time it's going to be equal to zero, then one, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six, and you know, all the way down. And as you scroll, it's going to be asking about those pieces of information. But just to show you how awesome this is, let's go ahead. I'm going to add one new emoji between the poo and the race car. Let's go ahead and pick a new one here. Ooh, we'll do a little bento box here, get all Japanesey. So I want you to notice right now between poo and race car, there's no bento box, but I added one to the array here. So now when I run my app one more time, look at this, da, 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 da. boom, bento box. Man, how excellent is that? If you couldn't tell, I'm ecstatic about this stuff. I think it's so cool how this works. So we are off to a very great start here with the Emoji Dictionary. We have successfully gotten a bunch of emojis to show inside of a table view. Our next step for us is we got to make it so that when we tap on one of these emojis, we go to a new view controller and then we can do some stuff like, you know, blowing it up big and, you know, we want to have that nice back button there. There's all sorts of things that we're going to dive into, but let's go ahead and cover that in the next video.